We got a 24 Duramax, exactly. and you've already got eye candy going for us. Yes. Yeah, this is a stock L5, 24 L5P, which has a number of upgrades. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at is the air intake horn, what we call a monster rem application. The stock air intake horn, which is plastic, is compromised in its flow section and also compromised in the final choke diameter, the outlet size, mm -hmm. into the compressor wheel. And we found that with a little bit of science, we could increase that outlet size, get better flow, increase the flow path through here, which I'll show you comparatively in a moment, and have less pressure drop from here to the compressor, basically unloading the compressor again, mm -hmm requiring less drive pressure to run the system. Also, the volume and the way we flow onto the wheel is more uniform than the stock setup. So it loads the wheel symmetrically, gives you better compressor efficiency, which also drops the drive pressure requirement. Nice. It makes less heat to the air when it compresses it. The volume also gives you what I call gulp capacity. Mm -hmm. When you nail it, the flow into the compressor is instantaneous. It's present right at the face of the compressor wheel. It doesn't take a while to get there. It's there. The applications that are in the field right now, we're getting, man, man I feel the improved throttle response. Oh, it's, mm -hmm. it's that noticeable. It's seated the pants. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's not a real expensive piece e either. It's not like $1,000 or something. Uh, so it's, I, I believe it's under $300, $290 something. And uh, I'll show you the difference over here a little more dramatically, just to show you what we're doing. This is a cross section of the, this compressor. Mm -hmm. uh, the, as you can see, we've got a stock from GM. We have a billet wheel in this turbocharger. Mm -hmm. What we're changing is this part, the red part from here out. From here in is the stock turbocharger. And it has a system called anti-surge. Mm -hmm. What is surge? Surge is when you're asking for a lot of boost pressure, a lot of pressure ratio at a low mass flow. You're not moving a lot of air, but you're asking for a lot of pressure. So what happens is it inhales into the wheel, goes out into the compressor out and into the boost tube to the, to the intercooler. It gets to a point as you're rolling into the throttle, the grip on the air, the air is kind of thin, so to speak, and you're asking to the wheel to put a lot of pressure, it loses the grip. The flow that's in here is now at a higher pressure than in the wheel. It reverses flow through the wheel. The flow goes backwards through the wheel and into here, and in some cases, all the way to the air foot filter. Wow. You get this pulse of hot air. You can hear it do it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it goes choo 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 choo. Yeah. Like that. But you not can, in a cool blow off valve kind of way. No, it's pretty, pretty <laughs> severe. We, we were. Testing on the dyno, some of the competitive products, which in, increase the surge and, and in a lot of cases defeat the surge system. So what happens here is the air comes back into the wheel, flows backwards through the wheel, and we've got this slot right here mm -hmm. into this chamber that's annular. It goes all the way around. That high pressure hot air pulse gets absorbed in here, and then it goes back into flow in this air gap right here. So area. outside the compressor wheel, so you're not yes. discharging it back on the compressor yes, wheel exactly. itself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then it flows back into the system. So it'll run there. That's The system protects it from surge. If you screw with that, and there's a few ways to do it, you increase the surge. Mm -hmm. You can also get a, a surge problem at high boost. There's a couple of, of different manifestations. But I'll tell you, testing uh, in an L5P on our chassis dyno, First, first time I felt it, the nose of the truck literally bounced to like six inches. Oh, wow. And this is just this backward pulse of air. Whatever inner energy, whatever it did to the engine speed, because mm -hmm. the horsepower just goes, whoo, and then it comes back, and then it goes down. And so the nose of the truck is going up and down because the horsepower is going up and down. And you're, wow. you're a wide open throttle. It's like, what the hell is this? So we wanted to improve the flow and not increase the surge. So you got the factory one here and it, it's kind of got a unique, if I'm looking at things yeah. lined out here, a unique design to it from the factory. And we're using that same ceiling surface and this outside diameter. It's the inside diameter and you can basically see how much larger ours is on the discharge. You can also see pretty easily, look at the cross-sectional difference here. And remember I was on a 
previous look at another product, we were talking about the short side radius on the flow. Correct. Where it's turning and going into the compressor wheel right through here. So this radius is mission critical. So we've got volume, less restriction into the compressor by virtue of this diameter. The way we present the flow to the, to the compressor inlet gives you a uniform pressure and velocity across the compressor, uses the compressor wheel to advantage. So there's a lot going on here with this thing. And still maintains that relief. Yes. All the way around yes. for it to yeah, we maintain alleviate the, the gap. surge. We were able to change the di di diameter, but the, the, that gap is critical. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you make it worse. So what's out there on the market? Well, this one's an uh, interesting one. This guy obviously has can bend muffler tubing. Right. You know, it's a steel tubing, a tin deal. But he made his flange kind of weird. The outlet flange bolts on here, completely eliminates the surge gap. It just bolts against the compressor inlet. Mm -hmm. And this hangs into the wind. There's nothing going on here that's positive. It's all negative. So this thing hurts overall flow ca capacity by having this stuff hanging into the inlet area. And secondly, it makes surge like a bandit. Yeah, and it opens that gap that you were talking well, about being pretty kind critical. Of a, it, it. Yeah, it kind of eliminates the gap. It leaves it wide it open. It mounts right here. Yeah. So this whole thing mm -hmm. from, this, from this surface in all this part, yeah. all this part is missing. You it's, go from having this little, whatever, three sixteenths or so. Yes, to almost three oh, inches a, or a half know. an inch or so mm -hmm. of gap. There's no way the surge system can work. And it's not just lugging like I was telling you about, you know, squeezing into it, coming onto a freeway. That's where this will really manifest itself if it's wrong. Right. So we spent some time on this making sure that it was happy. And a lot of that time is validation. Instrumenting, measuring air temperature here, air pressure here. Is it popping back? What's going on? Well, um, and on, on top of it, you have your time you spend in it. Clearly, GM and Duramax spent some time yeah. engineering this as well. And granted, there was room for improvement, which is great, but they didn't just throw something flat and whatever on there. It absolutely was no. There's engineering to maintain. There's engineering right here. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, they don't go as far as we go to find it all there is to find. And secondly, this starts to become a flow limitation if you're tuning. Right. And this doesn't. This will take that stock compressor as far as it'll go. Yeah. To fix this, this is really funny, I think. The guy who makes this has a customer, Duramax Tuning, I think is the name of it. He takes this, cuts this stuff out, and he makes this, the sandwiches in between, Oh, to emulate that gap? Yes. Can you imagine that? This tells you right here that that doesn't work. I don't even have to tell you. Mm -hmm. A guy makes a fix for it, and he sells them, and people buy them. Because they bought this, and they're stuck with it. Things surging and carrying on. These guys, and some of the other guys who make air horns for the L5P, talk about, well, you can, turn, you can tune around the surge. Well, how do you do that? Well, one way to do it is that that flow where you're just rolling into the throttle, don't make as much boost. Stay down on the boost. Well, that's, 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 that's just telling you, yeah, you're taking away power to band-aid the fact that the thing is screwed up right. and wrong to begin with. So, well, we can sell you a calibration to go along with this. Well, cool. Yeah. <laughs> but why do I need the calibration? Because this is wrong. Well, then you can just bypass all of it and get the right thing and have room for growth, all the room you'll need. Well, that's, that, that's what you'll end up with here. Yeah. Yeah. If you have an L5P 17 to current, and you're looking to make it breathe right without having any surging, check the link in the description for more information or visit the website, dieselpowerproducts.com.